Sure. First, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really excited to be able to present Mentimeter to all of you today. And I do have a presentation with me today. I wanted to present Mentimeter by using a mentee to all of you so that you get a first-hand experience of what it is like to participate in a mentee. Uh, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm part of the business partner team at Mentimeter. I work with a lot of universities and organizations across the world to help them uh, find the right solution for making uh, interactions uh, more engaging. Just to introduce Mentimeter, Mentimeter is an audience engagement platform and it primarily empowers educators and presenters to have more meaningful and more interactive conversations and discussions with their audience. With that, I am now going to use uh, the mentee that I have put together for you today. And uh, just to have a very interactive session, and we have only 20 minutes today, I would request all of you to try and participate in the mentee that we have here. What you can do is you can either scan the QR code or you can go to menti.com and enter the code 57504641. Once you're in the presentation, you can just use one of the icons on the bottom and let me know that you're in. It would be great to have some sort of participation so that you can yourself uh, see how Menti can help you. So you can use a thumbs up icon or the heart icon to just let me know you're in. I'm gonna put up the QR code again for a couple of seconds. Great, so now we have about 10 participants. Uh, you can join anytime. There is a link in the code on the slides, so you can just refer to that. Perfect. Um, the idea for today's session is just to introduce you to Mentimeter. If we have some time, we can go to the back end and also I can share how easy it is for presenters to create a Menti. But today I will be more or less letting you know how Mentimeter what it feels and looks like to the audience. If you have any questions, you can use the question icon at any point during the session. Perfect. So to get started, I just want to know if any of you are familiar with Mentimeter already. I did see a couple of familiar names. So we do have some uh, customers, users already in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. So a few of you have used Mentimeter. I see a super presenter as well. Tried it once, only voted on a presentation. That's great. So it seems like a lot of you are familiar with Mentimeter. Great. Awesome. So why should you use Mentimeter if you haven't used Mentimeter before or if you're not aware of what Mentimeter is? Mentimeter, the idea why we came up with this idea, with this product, uh, with this platform was to empower presenters. What we noticed was that there was a gap in creating more engagement in large sessions, large meetings, even small meetings, and there was no platform that would allow presenters to make sure that every voice in the audience is heard. Not every room is full of extroverts, not everyone in the audience can raise their voice, not every student is able to ask questions when they want to. So we wanted to bridge that gap, which is why we came up with this idea. And it's an easy to use online platform using just a few clicks, you can create presentations. You can deliver those presentations and understand the audience's feedback and sentiment while you're delivering the presentation and then also analyze the results after. Uh, you can receive feedback. So if you're using Mentimeter for uh, 
as an educator, you can run remote classes, you can run in-person class ses classroom sessions, you can also have hybrid sessions, and you can use Mentimeter to create more engagement, to break the ice, to ask questions, to run quizzes, to ask for feedback, to just have more meaningful and deeper conversations and discussions. And you can also gather uh, feedback and insights and use them for uh, reference for future presentations. So you can also run surveys, you can have anonymous inputs, you can have non-anonymous inputs. So there's a lot that you can do as a presenter, as an educator with a Mentimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a deep dive already into what are the different options uh, that you would have as an educator when you are creating presentations for your audience, for your students and participants. So you can choose to create question types with Mentimeter. So there are different question types, slide types as questions that are available. We already looked at multiple choice, for example. You can also have word clouds as a slide option. You can have open-ended questions. So you can ask a question to your students, to your audience, and they can choose to uh, respond in an open text form. You can have scales. You can ask participants to rank different responses and give them a ranking. And you can also have a Q&A slide where you can just open up for questions. This helps when people do not want to ask a question verbally but you can always put up a slide where people can enter their questions anonymously without having to enter their name. Then you also have advanced question types. So there are, this is just uh, an extension of the different slide types we have. Uh, just to give you an example, pin on image is a type of an advanced question. And if I were to show you that how it works, uh, you can probably use this as an example. If you just want to open up a session and ask participants where they are located in the world right now, this is an example of a pin on image slide. So you can actually go to your mobile device and uh, navigate to where you are located. It's a great icebreaker, but you can also use it in so many ways. Uh, I am aware of uh, teachers using this kind of slide type, for example, for potentially asking students to locate where different organs are in a body or a lot of different things. So you can get really creative with Mandimeter and the different slide types that there are. Nice. And yeah, we do have a lot of options for making uh, interactive slides and building uh, engagement, but we also have content slides. So not every slide has to be interactive. You can also have static slides, which are just for content. And to give you some examples, you can have slides which could have just a heading, just a paragraph, bullets. You can embed images, documents, videos. So think of it as a presentation making platform where you can do everything that you would do while creating a presentation, but also add interactivity through different question types or quizzes. Now, I want to also run a quiz today, just so you can see how you can create a quiz for your uh, participants if you want to run a session, a live session or a hybrid session. Uh, it's a great way to engage participants. It's a great way to understand whether the participants are really uh, gathering the information that you're sharing with them. Are they retaining that information? It's a great way to make this classroom session or any sort of meeting more fun and interactive. So I have a couple of questions for all of you today and you can just join the quiz by entering your own name or the default name that shows up. So we have eight participants now. I'm going to nine, start already. So you will see a question on your screen. You can, when you're creating a quiz, you can choose to have one correct answer or multiple correct answers. 
You can choose to have a multiple choice question, an open-ended question. You can create quiz questions in multiple ways. You can run an, an informal assessment using this format. You can even have a formal assessment where you can ask participants to enter their name and you can score them at the end. Yeah, this was a bit of a trick question. Every response is correct. You can uh, collaborate with your colleagues using Mentimeter. So if you have to deliver a session where there are two or more people who will be involved in creating the content, you can co-create the content with your colleagues at the same time. You can download and analyze the results after the session. So like I said, you can use quizzes or other slide types to do an in-class uh, assessment, for example. And you can download the results and give the students a score based on their inputs. So you can do that. You can also use uh, Mentimeter for offline surveys. So it doesn't have to be just for live sessions, but even after you've delivered a session, you can, for example, ask for feedback or run any sort of survey offline if you would like, and you can choose to. So by default, all the responses are anonymous because uh, the idea is to make everybody comfortable when they're participating in a session. However, you can choose to make certain presentation, certain sessions non-anonymous, if that's right for the occasion. So you can do all of that with Mentimeter. And then I have another question for you. Can you use audience space if you want to use Mentimeter to send out a survey in advance? True or false? Perfect. That's right. Uh, yeah, so like I said, it all Mentimeter can be used for live in sessions like we are having one now, but I could have also chosen to send out a Menti to you before this session, just to understand how many of you are aware of Mentimeter, how should I alter my content based on your current level of understanding of Mentimeter, for example, or with any other sort of question, for example, what is your expectation? So you can choose to have offline service as well before or after uh, the presentation. And that's pretty much what I had for today. Uh, I do want to take questions if there are. And then now, since we do have some time, I would like to also show you how it's, oh, before that, we do have a leaderboard. So we have a winner, which is St. Elmo, if you want to identify yourself. But isn't this great? And this is the kind of activity that a lot of professors, teachers who've been using Mentimeter really, really appreciate and their students really enjoy this. I hope you did do this to get a little bit of an understanding of uh, how this can help you. Awesome. I wanted to keep it really brief. There's a lot more. I will give you a quick look uh, of the back end as well. But before that, I do want to stop and take questions if there are any. You Thank can you. choose. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? Is there any integration with the LMS? Uh, we do have a few integrations. We do not have an integration with any LMS. I know a lot of uh, our customers, uh, universities ask me, uh, do you have an integration with Moodle? But uh, you do not really need an integration with Moodle because for the purpose that you're trying to solve, you can just embed a mentee or a mentee link within your existing platforms. So we have seen that a lot of universities are already doing that. We do have other integrations. We do have an integration with PowerPoint. So you can import 
your PowerPoint, your Google Slides, your Keynote Slides into Menti. So if you've already created a presentation, you can just uh, upload that and import it and then add the questions or the interactive slides. We do have an integration with Zoom as well. And we have an integration with MS Teams as well. Mm -hmm. So those are available. We, uh, yeah. Uh, for the model, you, what you're meaning is that we can use it as a link to integrate Exactly. That. Okay, so that's sometimes enough. Just to give you a brief uh, overview of how you can create a mentee, when you start off, you will not have any slides over here on the left-hand side. So you can simply add a slide. You can choose the type of slide that you want. Do you want a question type? Do you want to create a quiz? Do you want a content slide? Any advanced question? And you simply select that, that's step one. And step two is that you enter the question. If you chose multiple choice question, and you enter the options and that's about it. That is how you create a basic slide. Of course, you can choose to further customize it by adding images, changing layouts, or adding advanced layouts or colors, you can do that. But the basic process is just two steps. You decide what slide type you want and you enter the content in the format that's already there. We do have a lot of uh, example slides for inspiration. So if you are in education, you can choose from a lot of existing slide types. Uh, you can also create default themes for your university or your education institute or organization by selecting your logo, your color scheme, your font. So that kind of branding and standardization can also be taken care of. What is also very interesting is that we have some advanced uh, features and functionalities that allow you to make sessions more appropriate for classrooms. So we have a profanity filter, for example, you can turn on moderation. So if you open up for questions and you ask your students to enter the questions, but you feel that not every question is relevant or appropriate to be presented in a live session, you can turn on moderation and you can select which question appears on the screen. And not just that, you can also you can also preview your presentation before you're presenting it. And you can also use Menti mode for moderation. So if you have an existing presentation and you want to use your mobile device while you're presenting on your laptop or a big screen, for example, or if you want to use another laptop to moderate the entire session, you can use Menti mode and you can go from one slide to another. You can see the questions that have been asked. You can um, moderate the questions from here. So there, there's also Menti mode that you can use to efficiently deliver your presentations. You can have presenter notes if you would like. And also uh, you can have collaborators here. So you can see there are two people who are a part of this Menti and two people can make changes at the same time. You can choose to have more and you can invite collaborators directly from here. You can share the presentation and you can also see the results. So you can export the results to an Excel after you have delivered the session. You can also download PDF and share that externally if you would like, in addition to the link that you can work with. From a presenter standpoint, that's uh, more or less what I wanted to share with you. There are a lot of options available for admins as well. How can you manage teams? If there are multiple people using Mentimeter, how can you uh, control the access rights? How can you add people to a subscription, manage them? We have option for SSO, Skim, setting default themes. So there are a lot of admin options as well, which I will probably not cover today. Or Michael, do you recommend that I do that as well? You can do it brief if you like. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So any questions on the presenter side of Menti? Okay. This is 
your view when you log into Mentimeter, you can see all of your presentations. You can create folders. You can share your presentations, duplicate them if you want to repurpose them, invite collaborators, export the results. This, this is your primary view when you log in. As an admin, uh, an organization has added functionalities that they can work with. An admin can invite members to a subscription. They can share a link to the entire organization or a particular group if they want them to join, um, people to join through the link. And you can always have a view of how many users are already a part of the subscription. You can see how, how active the users are, how much engagement they are driving. You can also choose to remove people from the subscription if they no longer need access to the platform. You can also create subgroups within the subscription. So if there are people that belong to a particular uh, department, you can have them in a separate group and they can have their own group level settings. You can also see some analytics. So you can see how many people are actively using Mentimeter, what kind of templates are they using, what kind of themes are they using, how many presentations have been created and delivered and what kind of engagement has have the users been able to drive with Mentimeter. And there are additional team level settings. If you want to set up SSO, if you want to uh, set up scheme, if you want to restrict who can view uh, people within the subscription, uh, who can join from what domains, there are a lot of um, admin level settings as well that are available for the admins to work with. And we have uh, in-app support that everybody can access. and. We have a great products team also based out of Sweden. So they're always available to help our customers and users. Thanks a lot, Chiyoti. That was great, really. My pleasure. I am curious if there are any more questions and if anybody is willing to sort of try out the platform, I will be happy to also present, also share a trial maybe if you would like. So you can reach out to me. I can share my email address already in the chat. Thank you so much. And My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity.